In episode one of Shop Tour, we went over the footprint of the shop, the utilities, the air, the dust collection, the electricity, that stuff. We didn't talk about machines. No. We're now going to talk about machines. Okay. Indian Costello. Hey. Let's do it. So all the machines we're going to go over, we call our milling department. Go start with the lumber, yeah. and then we'll show how we go from raw lumber, and I want you to end with rectangle. Can do. Lumber time. <laughs> Lumber's over here. <laughs> so yeah, it all starts with lumber. But it's already Wood. rectangles. Yeah, trees don't always come in the size rectangles that you want. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh, it's loud. Oh, we'll go this way. The goal is to make a rectangle. Either it's 4S or 6S. S4S? S4S stands for surfaced four sides. Here's one, two, three, four. Okay. So surface four sides means you have planed the top and the bottom, and you've also ripped or planed the two edges parallel. Okay. And 90 degrees all the way around is nice square edges. Got it. That's the face of the board. This is the edge of the board. This is the end. Everything we're doing is really just taking raw lumber and making it clean and square on four sides. That's right. So step one is the skip planer. Okay. This is a planer, double-headed. Yeah, so you see the cylinder right here? Yep. There's a bunch of little carbide teeth in a helical pattern. So you got a big cutter head on the bottom here, and you got a big cutter head on the top back here. So the board gets fed through, and in one pass through the machine, it gets smoothed out on the bottom, and then cut to a particular thickness at the top. So the first head is a jointer head. Yep. That's cut from the bottom. You set that manually with this wheel to determine how much you want to take off. A 32nd of an inch, you know, a 16th of an inch. That bottom wheel is adjusting the depth of cut. Correct. The bottom doesn't move. The top is going to come up and down, yeah. but you can either take a really aggressive bite off the bottom or just a little bit. Generally, you want to remove more or less equal amounts off the top and the bottom. And then you just uh, adjust it to however thick you want it to be. Let's say we're going to go to two inches. Now just going to move down two inches. So the first head is going to take off a fixed amount that you set, and then the second head is going to take off the remainder to get you to the dimension you want. It doesn't move very fast. Why well, would this set at five inches? They're probably cleaning They open it up wide to clean it. So yeah, this is step one. Before lumber can go to our rip saw, which is a, an optical camera-based system, you need to clean it up to get more consistent results. Because if it's very dark and grimy and dirty, it doesn't read it as accurately. This lumber that we get in, it's always the same thickness when we no, order so, it? So or the no? lumber that comes in, you buy it, it's called four quarter, which means four quarters of an inch. Four quarters, roughly one inch. But it's not actually one inch. It's either gonna be a bit more or a bit less than one inch. We want it to be cleaned up and consistent the first plane, which we call the skip plane, what do they take it to? 0.98 inches. So everything coming out of here is going to be 0.98 at the maximum. Right. It might be a little thinner if, if the boards are shitty. Step number two. This machine right here is our optimizing rip saw system. So inside that big gray box, there's four saw blades that can automatically adjust. Under this black hood right here, is a camera that scans the geometry of the board. And now you can see the board up on that screen. So we have a, a rip list input into the machine. Here are the widths of boards that we want. It looks at the geometry, decides the best yields given our parts that we've entered out of that board, adjusts automatically, and then spits out the widths that we want. We buy all our wood random. Okay. Random width, random length. Whenever you can introduce that random width, it gives you a much better yield. Right. Because if you're trying to get, hey, we're only doing four inch boards, and you put in a seven inch board, you get one yeah. and a whole bunch of garbage. Right. You throw it away. If you have that concept of random, it'll look at that extra piece, and it'll give you the maximum usable amount. Right. So we usually try to always include that 
to increase the yields. So that is how the RIP system works. Step one of making rectangles. So this is what they're outputting. This is 2S, right? So these are now perpendicular and parallel to the faces. So we've actually already achieved four S's. Four of the S's in those two operations. Why aren't we done? Well, it's kind of long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is kind of long. Yeah, okay. We are going to need to start to cut it to length, but we're not going to take it to the final length yet. We're going to do a, it's called the rough chop. Chopping means cut it this way. So when you're looking at a board, ripping is cutting it the long way. Now we're going to chop it. of parts, in this case a list of lengths that we want for the products we're running at this given time. All that gets entered into the computer so we can keep track of how many we've got. If we need a 25 inch long piece and we need 400 of them, you can put that in and it will keep track. Oh nice. So it's going to again scan the board, understand how much usable material you have, mm -hmm. and then optimally cut out the length pieces from that piece you put in. So here's a piece of wood that just came from the rip saw, now it's getting chopped. See, this is the end of the board. We've got a big crack, it's too thin right here. This is where some bark was. We don't want this to be in any of our products. Right. So we can take these fluorescent crayons and you just mark some lines on it. It's gonna recognize these locations and it's gonna know that, hey, for whatever reason, we don't want this section of board. So will it just make a cut wherever you make a mark, basically, or no? Not exactly. Oh. It doesn't cut on the line. The lines define the waste. It looks at the remaining usable space mm. and takes what it can out of there. So for instance, yeah. the lines right here, this might be my usable amount of space. If I only need a 30-inch piece, it's gonna do a head cut, take a piece this big, and then spread the rest. Because right. you can't get another usable piece out of that. Yep. So it's not always right on the line. Got it. So this is what comes out of the chop machine. Here's the different lengths that we needed. They need to get sorted into the different products. Since we have two machines that run in tandem, the parts and the waste both gets transferred up the conveyor belt and onto this long cross conveyor. So here we've got good parts, which are gonna become a product. Those get stacked on pallets. Then we've got waste block, which is still clear and large enough to be usable in our finger joint machine. I think we should hit the finger jointer right now. The waste that we were just collecting off the chop conveyor, we accumulate um, no! Noises! and then we reprocess to get any remaining defects out. We've got a finger joint machine we're going to take a look at, which can join all this block end to end. Yeah. Glue does not glue this way. So there's a special joint we'll take a look at that creates long fingers that slide together and then you can glue that together. Would you say this is the most complex machine that we have here, or no? Oh, this is a lot of machines all together. This might be the most complex. Yeah. And there's a lot of adjustment that can be made. There's right. a lot of nuance, there's a lot of art. Fundamentally, this is the input side. You line up a bunch of blocks in this conveyor belt, they transfer up to the front conveyor belt where they all get lined up. This conveyor belt transfers them across and cuts the finger joints onto one end of the boards. They then get transferred across to this other machine, so the other side of it then gets the finger joints cut into them. Glue gets applied to the finger joints when it comes off the last shaper. Right. And they get transferred across this into the feed belt. Then you just stack up blocks that feed through here and get lined up as long as the board you're trying to make. We'll make boards at different lengths depending on the product we're making. So these get lined up with glue, flattened, and then pressed together. Due to the shape of the joinery, the tapered fingers, when it gets pressed together, basically the glue and the friction just hold them there until the glue dries. And as soon as it comes out of the machine, it's already put together. We can't machine this yet. It has to dry overnight before we can put it through any other processes, but it's together well enough where it's not gonna fall apart. It can just dry like this. See the zigzag? Yep. So these will go from here to the molder 
and then get glued into panels. Sorry. We talked about rip, we talked about chop, we talked about what we do with the waste from the chop, which is finger joint. Now it is time to make panels. We gotta get wide. You know what an opticizer is? It's got like a laser on it. It does have a laser. And it uses the laser to measure the width of the boards. You're right. That was pretty good. So yeah, we're trying to make a particular width of panel. We load in our random width staves, so it'll scan them and then feed across the glue roller however many staves it's gonna to take to complete your panel. Once they go over the glue roller, they get unloaded onto the clamp rack where they get squeezed. Comes down the conveyor belt, goes to the glue. Now that thing is glue pump, so how do we keep them overflowing? These clips, this thing connects to the cow. Once it touches glue, it stops pumping. Let's see if we can make it work. Oh. oh, the pump's going! It's pumping! Oh. Ah. Okay, yeah, because you pulled it out so it thinks it's empty. Yeah. yeah. And so it's starting to fill it back up. Yeah. Cool. I had no idea how it worked either. <laughs> <laughs> One thing people are going to have a question on, Ian. What kind of glue? I know. You may wood know. Glue. Ding, ding, ding. Wood glue. <laughs> it is wood glue. That's what we use. <laughs> so now these are all loaded up. Edges are nice and straight. Getting the clamps prepped. And then Ethan will step out of the way and activate the hydraulic tightener. There's a nut driver that screws the ends of the clamps to tighten the panel. So in that way, the machine can press it flat and hold it at the same time that it's tightening the screw. Mm. So when it comes out of the clamps, this is what you get. All right. All our stays glued together, the correct width that we want, uh, ready to keep going. Go ahead, karate chop it. Yeah, no, it's solid. Very robust. Solid. We've almost completed our rectangle. This is roughly the correct thickness. It's roughly the correct width, but there's glue and nastiness all over it. Mm. So we've got to do our final cleanup planing operation. So planer number two. Planer number two, which is just planer number one's little brother. <laughs> it's just a little bit smaller and made for a little more precise planing than fast, hard, rough planing. Mm. So same process, these just get planed to their both sides to their final thickness. So this is a straight line rip saw. This is what we use to rip down everything to consistent widths. So you see when they feed one through, there's a laser. That's showing you where you're cutting. So that way, if you have a board where you have to cut both sides, you can line up the laser to cut one side, and then you can move it over to cut the other side. Mm. Fun fact, so Worm Life, episode one. Yeah. Oh, that machine. That's the anti-kickback. Yeah, when you push a board through, it can't, you cannot pull it out. Mm. I'm managing. This is called management, Tony. It's leadership. That was a big purchase. We were psyched. Yeah. $5,000. Like <laughs> we were like, whoa. Looking at the rippings we have over here, you can tell the difference between when we got to use our random widths. See how skinny these sticks are? Yeah. These are the sticks that they're ripping off those panels. Okay. When we have our fixed widths, look how much wider it is because we don't have the opticizer doesn't have as many selections to make. Ah. Everything's the same width, so it's kind of stuck with its solutions. Right. With random, it can do a much better job. It's pretty loud there. You okay? What? <laughs> so that's how we get rough lumber to panels and rectangles ready to go to our CNC and other departments for joinery. You know, you, you know where we should end? Is we should end at specs and tolerances. There we go. That'll be a nice wrap up for this. So this is the last stop. This is the QA department. This is the last stop before they go somewhere else to become something else. What is QA? Quality assurance. Mm. So to make sure that these rectangles we sent over here are the correct 
size. They have all the correct dimensions, so when they get to their next stop, they're not just wasted and ruined. Right. So we got handy dandy spec packet. This is all the places that they went to all along the way. So that's the chop, how long it's supposed to be. The automatic clamp carrier, how wide it's supposed to be. Planer, how thick it's supposed to be. SLR, how wide it's supposed to be. So that brings us to our QA assessment. Operators check along the way to make sure that they're getting the correct outputs, but we can't trust them, because <laughs> mistakes happen. So basically, someone's gonna go through this pallet, they're gonna pull out a bunch of sample pieces. We don't necessarily check every single one, but you'll pull out a representative sample from all different places in the pallet, and you'll check to make sure your thickness falls within this range, your width falls within this range, and your length falls within that range. And that's gonna make sure that we have a blank that's the correct size, that these are toppers. When it goes to the CNC department, they can get a good topper out of it. The quality of your rectangle is going to impact how well the next steps go, because the next steps are the joinery. You always work off of a rectangle. It's subtractive manufacturing. You have to have a nice rectangle for everything else. What did it cost? Yeah. <laughs> Planer number one, the yeah. fast one. Yes. That's gotta be, I feel like it was $80,000. 80, that was an $80,000 machine. Okay. And then probably another 10K for installation, electrical, the cutters. Ooh. Dust collection, call it 100. Yeah, you're 90 to 100K. Next up, the rip system. I believe that rip system and the chop system together was 500K or 300K? 350 for both. Yeah. And then also all the ancillary costs landed. Dust collection, electrical, call another 50K in there. At so least, yeah. 400K to get the rip and chop. So we're up to $500,000. We've chopped it. Finger jointer. 180,000 for the finger jointer. Yep. Call it 200 with dust collection, wiring, rigging, and insulation. Clamp racks. Those are cheap. 100K. Oh, was that for both of them or is that just for the single? Just for the single. Then we have that secondary planer. 60, 50, 60. 50, 60, K. And then the SLR. That was probably like five or 10K. I think it was 10. 10, yeah, yeah. 10. Yeah. Just to make some nice, clean rectangles. Just to make a rectangle of wood. I mean, a lot of them. Yeah, Very quickly. Them. So next time we get together, Matt, we'll take these rectangles, we'll take Johnny. Johnny. Uh -oh. I heard my name. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> next time we get together, you're gonna give us a tour of CNC department, M&T cell, and molder, joinery. I'm the guy for that? I I think so. <laughs> <laughs>